Hello, everyone. My name is Kelsey Stewart. I am the Director of Education and Outreach here at SafeCast. And today I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Asby Brown. I'm a SafeCast Lead Researcher. And today we're going to be talking to you about the upcoming course, Advanced Resilient Communities Against Disaster, which is part of Topics in Japanese Geography. And it'll be an English language lecture course. Yeah, so Asby, can you tell us a little bit about how this course has been done in the past and what you're thinking for this year? Sure. Uh, this course, I think, will be the seventh year uh, it's been given. Uh, it began because the group that we're both part of, SafeCast, uh, had begun monitoring radiation and teaching normal citizens how to monitor radiation after the Fukushima disaster, which happened in March 2011. And in the process, uh, we developed quite a few uh, devices. This is called a Bigaigi, which makes maps of radiation. It's very simple to use. Uh, and we have other devices. Um, so th this one is called a rad note. This one stays in one location and sends radiation data continually from one location. So it's a real-time monitor. Well, SafeCast developed a lot of expertise at both developing these devices and building communities that can uh, you know, measure radiation and share it through our online tools onto our map and through our database. And one of our early collaborators was Professor Taichi Furuhashi of Aoyama Magakuen, and who basically began this course with me, uh, thinking that students would be interested to learn how to do this. So the course focuses on uh, radiation monitoring and mapping uh, as part of learning about open source tools for this kind of environmental measurement. Uh, and it, it involves actually visiting visiting Fukushima as a group and learning to use these tools and monitoring radiation. So the objective for this course, Advanced Resilient Communities Against Disaster, is to become familiar with the causes and consequences of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant disaster and develop a working knowledge of the potential for crowdsourced collection of environmental data by citizens to fill in the gap in official information. The course itself is broken down into 15 modules, which are covered over a four class seminar. The first one is going to be held on October 1st, which is a Tuesday during fifth period from 440 to 620. At this time, we'll be giving you an introduction to the class, including the basic story of safe class, we'll review key terms such as open data, citizen science, uh, iterative design, and more. We will also give you a more fulfilled uh, plan for what's going to be happening uh, during the field work in Fukushima. Uh, the field work itself will be held over two days on December 14th, which is a Saturday, and December 15th, which is a Sunday. Uh, during this time, we'll be doing many things, which I'll let Asby explain in a moment. But the course will wrap up on January 12th, which is a Sunday, where we will be giving uh, presentations here at the SafeCast office based on the data that you all gathered during your field work. So Asby, can you tell us a little bit about what the field work is going to be looking like? Sure, uh, I don't know. I, I imagine probably no one who's watching this video has visited Fukushima unless maybe you're from there. Um, more than well, 13 years have elapsed since the disaster happened and uh, a lot has changed since then and a lot has not changed. So we will be visiting uh, various parts of Fukushima, affected communities, uh, all of which is accessible and safe in terms of radiation risk. We'll be teaching about radiation radiation risk and how to gauge that on your own, but we will not take you anyplace dangerous, but we'll be looking at the current situation and seeing how the uh, the situation for radiation at the time of the disaster has affected how well communities have been able to come back, uh, which places people have returned to, which places they have not returned to, and why. Uh, so you'll get a good overview of the physical environment, the natural environment, the built environment, and we'll be running our uh, mapping radiation detectors. The big IGs will bring uh, these for uh, for the team to use, uh, making uh, a, a data maps of this whole situation. And we'll also be talking with local residents. We'll we'll make some stops. Uh, we'll we plan to stay at a wonderful inn in the town of Odaka, uh, which 
basically is like a, a, a kind of a center for everybody from the community to come together and talk about their issues. And uh, that includes activists and researchers and government people, et cetera. Uh, and we'll also uh, visit uh, museums and memorials uh, that uh, tell the story of the disaster as well. So uh, it's two days. It's going to be a very busy two days, but it should be very, very interesting uh, and kind of packed. So we'll cover all of these issues uh, that are listed in the syllabus uh, during that uh, two-day field work trip. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. So about other expectations for the course. So the evaluation of this class will be in three parts. One is in-class participation. So the field work, of course, mm -hmm. is required. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some other assignments that we give you throughout the semester. And finally, there's going to be a report which accounts for 40% of the overall class evaluation. This report is expected to be approximately a 10 minute, 10 slide presentation, all based on the information and data that you gathered during your field research experience. Um, we intend to have this presentation done here in the SafeCast office in Shibuya in Tokyo, Japan. And we really look forward to seeing all these presentations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always been very, very interesting because everybody brings their own personal take to it. Um, things that are significant to one person may not be significant to someone else. And we also learn a lot from that uh, as teachers uh, because of the way students respond to what they're seeing and experiencing and hearing. So uh, it's a very, very worthwhile course from our point of view, uh, from SafeCast ourselves, because we are uh, you know, uh, an NGO, a volunteer-based organization that's been doing this since 2011. Uh, this kind of education is uh, really a, a very important part of our mission. So uh, this work we do with students at Ayama Gakuin has been a very, very noteworthy part of that. So we look forward to continuing it. Yeah. So I think that if you're a student who's interested in citizen science, if you're interested in natural disasters or human-made disasters, you know, how we can cover this from an environmental data perspective, if you're interested in seeing what's happening in Fukushima mm -hmm. after all of these years following the nuclear incident, and seeing it with new eyes, I would recommend that you join this course. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody I'm missing, Esme? I don't think so. Um, I mean, anybody we're missing, well, I'd say there, you'll meet some interesting people uh, in Fukushima and um, you know, people who live there, people who are uh, doing wonderful work to help reestablish communities. Uh, as far as other things that may be worth adding as well, Fukushima is a special case, fortunately, because of this terrible disaster in 2011, but it's not the only example of radiation risk or situations where radiation should be mapped. And uh, the case for doing this uh, by citizens, as citizen science, as open data is very, very strong. And this is also something that we're learning about in other parts of the world, including, for instance, Ukraine, Chernobyl, other parts of Europe, uh, parts of the United States and other South America, uh, you know, Africa, all around the world. So um, you'll be able to learn a lot about that and uh, maybe uh, make this part of your mission as well. Great. Thank you so much, Asby. Thank you, Kelsey. And I think that we have a short video after this to give you guys some more details about SACAS themselves. I know I'm really excited to meet all of you guys uh, for our class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the video, I guess I'll just tell you, this is um, a, a three minute video that's an introduction. It's really the best introduction to SafeCast. Uh, it won some awards, uh, you know, when it was made more than 10 years ago, I suppose, uh, but it's still very, very valid. It sort of tells the story of the foundation and purpose of SafeCast very, very concisely and briefly uh, and interestingly uh, in terms of visuals and sound. So uh, take a look at the video. Great. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys mm -hmm. and please enjoy the video. Bye. Bye bye. So the three of us are just talking, where can we find information? Oh, we can't find radiation data anywhere. And it's not because it's not being published, it's because it doesn't exist. Nobody was paying attention to this stuff. And so that's when we decided that we could start pooling our resources to get equipment, get equipment in people's hands and go collect some of this data and publish it so that there would at least be something available. Within a week, we had 20, 25 people all in this Skype chat room brainstorming and trying to figure out a solution to this problem.
were looking online and we couldn't get any Geiger counters. Literally within 24 hours, the whole world supply was uh, sold out. When we realized that we couldn't get the equipment, we decided that the only way to get this done is let's go and build it ourselves. So we came up with the idea that if we put a Geiger counter on a car and we drive around with it, we can collect radiation and put it on the map. Only problem was is we didn't have the equipment, we didn't have the system. So solution was go to Tokyo Hackerspace where there was lots of people that knew how to put things together. And on the sixth day after we had the idea, we had a working system. The next day we were off to Fukushima doing our first measurements. As we started taking measurements, we saw that a reading can change like 100% just by crossing a street. And that's when we realized that it was really important for us to take very granular street by street readings every five seconds and publish really granular data so that people can drill all the way down and see exactly what the reading is right in front of their house, not an average of the entire city. After a couple of months, we realized that it would be much better for volunteers to have something that would be very concise and compact. As we redeveloped the whole system and we were able to use Arduinos and open hardware to fit it into a bento box. And that's how we came up with the bento Geiger system. Once we built one, we taught other people to build many more of them. And that really allowed us to scale up dramatically. Well, this is a disaster. This is a tremendous opportunity to take this tons of data that's being collected and try to understand what the effects on people is. That can only happen if we share the data and we put the medical data together with the radiation data. And right now the key to combining data is to make it open. And so one of the really important features of the SafeCast project is we're using a CC0 public domain dedication for all of the data so that we can try to get people to do data science on it. We found out from Fukushima that the experts really weren't very helpful. And in fact, that citizen science actually works. We were able to collect more data than all the projects in history, and a lot of scientists came together. And by pulling through the network, we were able to become the best in the world. So I think what SafeCast proves is that all the preparation in the world, all the money in the world, still fails if you don't have a rapid, agile, resilient system. Because of the internet, because of our agility, because of our openness, within weeks we had the world's experts together to do this, and within a year we're the biggest project that has ever existed in this kind of monitoring. And I think it really shows that with the right people and the right resources and agility, you can beat the pants off of any government pre-planning or institutional system.